The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets picking up in negative territory quite the day yesterday. You could say one for the record books. As we accelerate, you're talking about near 5% in the NASDAQ, greater than 4% in the S&P. Huge numbers this morning. We're opening, <clears throat> excuse me, down 1% in the S&Ps. You're just off that number. 0.96%, you're negative 37 points. You were as low as 38.56. I bring it up to the tick because that is one point away on the S&P from where we were, the lows of May 12th. And you talk about an acceleration. We had a price of 4,095, excuse me, for the high yesterday. That's right, 4,095. You are 210 S&P points below that price level. Remarkable. Uh, and you take a look at the S&P on a longer-term basis. We're bumping up right against that 382. We've been talking about it for a while, how the NASDAQ was at that 382 level. Maybe the S&P makes it down to that level. We're about 90 points from that level right now. S&P is down about a percent this morning. You jump over to the NASDAQ. So much for 12,000. We're at 11,844. The lows of last week, 11,689. So you're talking about 150 points. We're as low this morning, 11,704. So what's that, 15 points? Basically touching the lows just like the S&P. Now the NASDAQ flirting right at the 50% price level retracement of the entire move higher on COVID. And folks, that's a 50% retracement of a 10 thousand point move in the nasdaq 100 6600 to 16700 just like that the nasdaq 100 giving up five thousand points from the highs you get the dow right now now the dow the only index hasn't made it to that 382 yet you're trading at 31,130 on that price level for the dow you're talking about a price level of 29,000 above 29,500 you could say that would bring you back to the 382 of the acceleration higher during COVID. The Russell this morning negative by 13 points. Bitcoin sitting at about 29,500. You got crude backing off a bit as well. You jump over to the short term chart on crude. Quite a pullback yesterday. Continuing that pullback today. You were just at 115. You're trading at 104 in the price of crude. Gold contract catching a bit. 1838. There's some action in gold. You got uh, the bonds. Let's get down to notes and bonds. Interesting, for the first time, maybe we have notes and bonds acting as they usually had, as in when you get risk off in the market, people go to bonds to seek yield. Uh, quite a different scenario from when you had the market accelerating lower because you had bonds, the price of bonds accelerating lower, pointing to higher yields that were bringing the market down lower. Maybe we've finally gotten to the point that we see a little bit of a recoil here where yields sitting at a level the market's comfortable with. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks after the break. He's been talking about what if rates sit where they are right now for a little while, right? We're sitting at 2.78%. That's quite a yield when you think of how we were just at 3% and change. You check out the daily, we're at 1.1708. So you got the 10-year trading up three ticks. Now for some context here, okay, you got the 10-year trading right where you were on April 8th. So you're talking about almost six weeks now, six weeks, the yields have been there for some context of where the market was on April 8th, okay? You jump back to the NASDAQ, let's find it. The NASDAQ was almost 3,000 points higher. So you've had the yield stay at a yield of, we're talking about the 10 year, about 2.8%, 2.7%. 8.7 to be exact right now, so that would round up to 2.79%. We'll call it 2.8%. You've been sitting at that price level for about five weeks, that yield level in the 10-year, and meanwhile, you've now had markets fall 3,000 points almost the NASDAQ 100, but interesting action yesterday, back to the 15-minute, as you had markets accelerating lower, and you actually had 
a uh, exodus to fixed income, an exodus to a safe haven, and that safe haven being yields, being uh, the tenure and just fixed income, which hadn't been the case for a while. So we'll see how that shakes out. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on in the market. The headlines write themselves, man. Quite a wipeout yesterday. $1.5 trillion wipeout. I saw that headline at first, and I said, oh, is that is that how much the market's lost from the highs? That doesn't seem that bad. No, folks, that's what it lost yesterday. Remarkable. Uh, and, yeah, this is pointing to that, you know, it's going to slide a little bit further today. We get the S&P down 1%. Now, it was down 1.6%. Take a look at the S&P in terms of where we were this morning. I woke up this morning. S&Ps, you're talking about a solid 30 points lower. You're 63 points lower. I said, man, it might be another bad one. And it might. Okay, we got 19 minutes to go until the opening bell. But the market's down about 8 tenths percent right now. So about half of where it was as of just about three hours ago at 6 a.m., and yeah, you talk about some volatility, man, in terms of where we were. S&P 500 slumped the most since June of 2020 over earnings and policy fears. Uh, many did not expect, folks, the wipeout that you could have in companies like Walmart and Target. Walmart disappoints early Tuesday. You have Target following that up with a great disappointment yesterday. And Target, I mean... Just a mammoth pullback, and it'll be interesting to see how this stock progresses forward. You jump over to the Analyze tab. We take a look at the fundamentals. And, yeah, that's still a PE. I wonder when this resets. I have to figure that out. 15.975, because that was in there yesterday, I believe, at the price, the same price level. Maybe they get reset on their earnings that they just came out with. But you're going to be approaching some levels of PE for a company like Target and a company like Walmart, man. Um you know, those are real companies, folks, and that's the worrisome thing when you're pulling back 25% in a company like Target. That is not a company um, with the likes of Zoom or Roku, for lack of a better uh, example, that's just predicated on extreme growth, extreme multiples. Not even the case. Shelves are empty in the Walmart near me. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because you got a dichotomy going on here. Part of the reason why those stocks traded back so much is because they got too many goods. They got too many goods right now. They stocked up on inventory at a time when business was booming. Now they got all that inventory. I think I saw on the article yesterday on Target that inventory levels 43% above where they were a year ago. Now, a year ago, they could just not keep up with business in any way. If you think about it, that's when inflation started to rage, right? The middle of 2021, it makes sense that inventory had almost nothing on these companies. They weren't prepared for the resurgence that we had going on coming out of COVID. That is still causing inflation. And now you have them loaded up with inventory. Same thing with workers, right? They ramped up with workers. You had Amazon doing the same thing, building out too quickly. Costs rising at a level that was not able to keep up with uh, the demand that has waned. And nonetheless, man, watch out. Now, Kohl's out with their numbers this morning. Uh, decent numbers. You're down a bit. So you're down $2.50. I say decent numbers as in they didn't fall 25%. You're still down about 5%, though, and that is after falling pretty heavily on yesterday's numbers from Target. You trade from 48 down to 43 yesterday. You're down to $40.50 uh, $40 about. They're taking bids to try and uh, sell the company, and they're going to be looking for those bids pretty soon. You got the market catching a little bit of a bid. Only down 30 points right now. We got a 3,800 hand in the S&P, folks. Stay tuned. Okay. Our man Kevin Hicks after the break. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by 32 points right now, picking up where we left off yesterday. All the markets in negative territory. We got a 3,800 handle in the S&Ps right now. You got an 11,000 handle in the NASDAQ 100. We're still above 31,000 in the Dow. Gold catching a bid this morning. You're up $23 right now in the price of gold at 1838, and we jump to notes and bonds uh, as you get a little bit of a bounce back right now. We get the 10-year up 26 ticks on the session. I mean, you got three huge surges. You got one all day yesterday when the market fell apart. You have another acceleration from where we were at about two in the morning. I mean, just look where we were at two in the morning, okay? We're up a full point from where we were at two in the morning. Gonna be interesting to see how this plays out in terms of where yields go. Uh, and where we go from there, but it looks like uh, you might have a little bit of a normal relationship, we could call it, between stocks and bonds, as when you have a flight away from equities, maybe into fixed income, hadn't been the case for so long when you had bonds selling off, yields rising, and that causing markets to sell off. Different scenario, uh, maybe a little bit of capitulation that we have reached an area that market's a little bit more comfortable with the repricing of some of the assets. I'm gonna take a look real quick. There was a, uh, I think it was our man Jeff, right? Who, who posted this in the den? I think it was G7, talking about just some of the equities. Yeah, it was. Uh, let me pull up this tweet because man, there are some huge numbers, folks. When you look at some mammoth companies, okay? 2022, Apple down 20%, right? Staggering numbers when you look at some of these companies right now. Microsoft, 24. Tesla, 33. You jump down the line. NVIDIA off 42%. Uh, and then you get into some of the crazy ones. PayPal even down 59%. Netflix, 71%. Shopify, 72, 74%. Uh, just remarkable. We got about 10 minutes to go into the opening bell. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV. Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They walk you through the day's market action. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Yeah, coming off a pretty bumpy day yesterday because think about, if you think about it, not only did Target and Walmart, that one-two punch, show us that retail has some issues, but you know, the consumer staple sec sector was a pretty strong sector. And so that got hit hard yesterday. So even that sector didn't help us. 
And so even for someone who's been around this market as long as I have, that was a pretty violent day yesterday, Tommy. So here's the good news, though, coming out this morning. The markets are all off their lows, off their overnight lows. You've got yields down. You've got the U.S. dollar down. You've got crude oil down. All those things point to maybe a slight recovery here in U.S. stocks. Now, that doesn't mean that that may, you know, we're off our lows to start the day. This is still going to be a bumpy, volatile trading day time. You've still got the VIX hovering just below the 32 level. That implies about a 2% move a third of the days. So volatility is still here. Uh, We'll see how this day's played out. Uh, The jobless claims number was higher than last week, but still a number that indicates a strong labor market. The Philly Fed number was horrible. That's a regional look at manufacturing in the Philadelphia area. But we'll see how this plays out with yields lower, the dollar lower, and crude oil lower. Three things that have been working against the market lately, Tommy. Yeah, it was interesting to see the action in the price of the 10-year out there. Yields, as you say, pulling back pretty dramatically. Um, Maybe a reset to, and I don't like the word normal occasionally, but more normal times, whereas you have the market pulling back, people flocking to, um, whether it's fixed income, some safe havens, uh, a little bit different from when you had yields rising, causing everything basically to sell off. Uh, Maybe that speaks to the market a little bit more comfortable with where we are. And you talked about it yesterday, Kevin, man, Target, I think we came into those earnings with a P.E. of like 15 or 16. I think we're down to something like 13, maybe potentially on Target. Um, At some point, these pricing, uh, repricing, you could call up a pretty dramatic yesterday. Yeah, I think that was the worst day for Target uh, since 1987 quite a pullback and it's it's we talked about it yesterday when you're on the show man target they got a great brand out there in terms of just the the brand likability as you guys talk about with like folio uh, but boy we got a wake-up call i think yesterday across the board Coles is out with their numbers kevin they're down a bit they're down about two dollars it almost feels like a reprieve when you still got the stock only down a couple bucks considering how some of these retail stocks have fallen out of bed but Coles was down 11 percent yesterday Uh, In a market like this, Kevin, at first it started off with all the growth stocks, right? I mentioned a couple of them right as we came to you in terms of the pullbacks we've had. We're all kind of familiar with the Zooms and the Rokus and the Pelotons of the world really pulling back. But now you got Walmart, man. Now you got Target. Um, Amazon's had quite a pullback. Where do you look, Kevin, in this market? And 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 talk about a million, if not billion dollar question, man, as in where, where are you looking? Now that we all know the safe havens, but when you see companies like Walmart and Target before this week, you might have thought at least you wouldn't be prone to the type of moves you had in the growth stocks. As an investor, where do you kind of try and try and get your chips in order in this market, you think? Well, I, I, I think you really have to, uh, and historically, in down markets like this, when they do recover, you want to have the best of the best. Now, Target had some self-inflicted wounds, right, in terms of um, the back end of their store. I think they're, they didn't see the move from discretionary to consumables in their yeah. inventory. And like I said, they had some, some missteps along the way, and the stock paid for that, right? I think you'll see higher prices from them. I don't think they'll take another quarterly hit of not passing on higher prices to to the consumer. I think Walmart's the same way. I I certainly expect those numbers to get better. Now, you're right, Tommy. My Fingers from Platform has targets PE at 11.4 right now to start the day. So I think that's pretty substantial there. That's for sure. So, um, you know, I think what you want to concentrate on, what your listeners want to concentrate on, two things that I've told young traders throughout my career. Don't freeze. Keep trading. Keep moving things around. Keep staying in the game. And look for good companies. Remember, earnings this quarter have been relatively positive. It's all the other things around the market that have been hurting names. Now, these retail names, these consumer staples, Walmart and Target, those weren't good. Right. And that surprise was a little bit of a misstep on their management's part. But you, you look at some of the big stocks that have come out with good earnings. That's where you should target. Right. Some companies still have good, good free cash flow. Some companies still have good earnings. The best of the best that are beaten up with the rest of the market is what you should be looking for, Tommy. 
And at least when you get, and this is my own opinion, man, when you get down to a PE that, you know, the human brain can understand, because many times, man, what was NVIDIA's PE at like the highs? It was something bananas. Um, and at least you're at a level, if you're a longer term investor, this might take, you know, you're investing in a company, if you believe in it, um, target's not going anywhere, folks. I think you're at about a $75 billion market cap for that company right now at a PE of 11 and change. Uh, maybe you're getting, you know, uh, uh, an entry in a longer term basis after that pullback that could be attractive on some levels. But we got some period of volatility to go, Kevin, man. We got like, you know, months, if not uh, stretching in where we're going to be dealing with these issues. Kev, we got 30 seconds to go. What are you guys talking about on the show at 12 today? Hello, Wealth Networks, Foot Locker, and John Deere and Company. All right, man. We appreciate it, Kevin. Thanks for taking the time as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 today. Have a great one and have a great weekend, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in at 12, Fast Market. We'll be right back for the open. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're looking at an S&P opening down about eight tenths percent right now. We're flirting right near the lows that we had yesterday. Now I say flirting with the lows of yesterday. Yeah, we're 30 points off the the bottom, folks. But in the context of yesterday's run, in the context of where we ended Tuesday, we're right near the lows that we had on last Thursday. We're right near the lows of the overnight session. We caught a bid. We'll see where we open. You got the Nasdaq catching a bid right now. Nasdaq 100 negative by just 47 points. You're talking about 200 points off of the lows almost. We were down at 11,000. Let's see what the low is to be exact. 11,704. We're approaching 11,900 right now in the market. You jump over to gold. Excuse me, gold up 22 bucks. Kevin talked about we're getting a dollar pullback right now. You got crude pulling back as well. You talk about a volatile market, man. I don't know what's going on with crude, 
But folks, since I came on the air at nine o'clock, crude's up two dollars. Not sure how you trade that one. Had a great conversation with my man Teddy Kegstat yesterday, and I asked him, said, if you're thinking about trading crude, man, how do you trade crude when you can be right? on let's put this thing on a daily let's just say you're right on a longer term basis as in the trend is positive territory okay but you're getting pullbacks there 10 to 15 dollars one of the things he talked about is you could trade forex all right you could trade those companies that uh countries not companies countries uh dependent on the crude market you get an acceleration in the price of crude you get strength in the economies that are crude producers uh, and he even added, then maybe you throw some options in there because the risks are just pretty paramount on these markets. I mean, folks, it's 9.31 since I came on the air. As I said, crude's up $2. And guess what? You can't even see a pop on this market right now because we have crude down a buck twenty-three in the session. Volatility everywhere, as they would say. And as Kevin said, man, you jump over to the VIX. VIX trading at 32 right now. Now, a VIX of 16, okay, means that you have a 1% move every three days. That is what's priced into the volatility when you have a VIX at 16. When you go to 32, you have a 2% move every three days. That's the volatility that's being priced in. If you don't think the market's that volatile, you should be selling the VIX. If you think it is more volatile than that, in theory, you should be buying the VIX, as we're catching a little bit of a market bid here. Uh, S&P's down only 20. Now, if the VIX goes to 24, Okay, that's one and a half times 16. That's one and a half percent that the market is pricing in a move every three days. It's important to understand this. People talk about the VIX all the time. They call it the rule of 16. Okay, you can Google it if you want. The rule of 16. If the VIX is at 16, it's pricing at a 1% move every three days. And all you do is you can multiply that 16 by whatever you want. So if it's at 32, you'd have to multiply it by two. Therefore, you get a 2% move every three days. Now, the point is we're at, 32, that's pricing in a 2% move every three days. Folks, the market's almost doing more than that right now. I think we did 4% yesterday. Already, you had the S&Ps. I mean, if you look where we were this morning, you were approaching 2%. You were down at a price level of 38.56. Excuse me. Yes, 38.56, okay? So you were down about 70 points in the S&Ps after being down what, 120 points yesterday. We're catching a little bit, we'll see where we go. Let's jump around to some of those stocks that got slammed yesterday, see how they're opening. Target, down another 2.2% today, no reprieve just yet. Walmart, down 1.1%. Amazon got hammered yesterday, they're catching a little bit of a bid, actually in the green right now. We might get the NASDAQ 100, there it is positive by barely a quarter of a point, 11,935. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Apple up about half a percent this morning. You jump to Microsoft up four tenths percent. They're all catching a bit on the open. Google still in the red by about a quarter percent. Man, Tesla really took it on the chin yesterday. They're still down seven tenths percent. Uh, Elon Musk taking a break from managing four companies uh, to tweet anything he wants yesterday. This one is, is, is quite a story in terms of how many narratives he's got spinning on Twitter at one time, let alone if he even wants to buy the company. You're down 1% on Tesla. You're seven, sitting at 700 bucks right now. Uh, we'll see where that goes. You get the Russell sneaking into the positive by a buck 50. Let's see where Kohl's trades. Kohl's out with their numbers. We'll jump into those in a moment. You're negative, but uh, in light of where this market is right now, you're only off 3.7% for Kohl's. You took it on the chin yesterday. You're trading at 41.40 right now. And I think I do have Kohl's numbers up here. Where are we? Yeah. Oh, I had them up here. Where are we? Come on. There we go. All right. So, Kohl's, uh, they're looking for bids. They're looking for final sale bids expecting in the coming weeks. Slashes full year outlook after earnings miss. Um, in light of where Target came in, though, not as horrible as you could have feared is one way to phrase things. Uh, they expect fiscal 2022 adjusted earnings per share of 645 to 685. The market was looking for 7 to 750. In light of shrinking margins on Target and Walmart, not that big of a miss right now with everything going on, in my opinion, folks. Net sales are forecast to be flat to up 1% from year ago levels compared to prior guidance of 2 to 3%. That would worry me more. Okay. If I was an investor in Kohl's, which I am not, but that would worry me more. 
in a longer term basis, folks, these companies, Kevin Hanks put it well, they're going to raise prices. They're going to get it under control. If you're doing business and you're rising revenue, raising revenue, you're going to figure out a way, and it might just be passing it along to consumers, okay? You're going to figure out a way to make sure that you're not losing money as you're growing your business. And when you see a company actually talk about that they may be flat, when you have inflation up 9%, okay, that is inflation adjusted losing business. That's more worrisome. Earnings per share, 11 cents versus 70, okay? Revenue, they do beat, but barely. They forecast, though, they're gonna miss on sales, probably going for the year forward. For the fiscal quarter, that net income, 14 million is what they get from the 11 cents uh, compared with 14 million or nine cents a year earlier. Now, Kohl's, this market's rocking, man. s and is only negative by eight. Uh, Kohl's, you take a look at this thing, you put it on a weekly, okay? There's your COVID drop off, you trade to 10 bucks, you chop around for a lot of the year, you accelerate higher. This move, now trading back to about 42 bucks. The 618 on Kohl's, about $37. All right, that could be an area maybe you find a bid, maybe it's gonna find a bid at this 50%. You did have quite a consolidation, that consolidation stretching back about 15 months in the price of coals, and we just break right through that level. Now here's what I wanna talk about on Target, man. Sitting right at that 618. 618, the 382, the two of my favorite Fibonacci levels, folks. Larry Pezzavento, I love the fibs, I love what he talks about them, and I'm telling you, all right, the one great thing about trading Fibonacci levels, folks, is you either know you're right or you're wrong. OK, you're looking to get in target. This could easily be an area for target. Kevin Hanks talked about it. OK, you're dealing with a P.E. ratio that is in the low double digits in terms of like 11, 12, 13. I imagine those numbers for earnings will go back up. They might not go back up in three months, though, folks. OK, there's going to take some time for these companies to sort out the volatility that they are experiencing. And some of the words that Target CEO used um, were startling in terms of how shocked they were of how quickly consumer behavior changed, leaving them kind of holding the bag on a lot of items that they had. More normal times will come about, folks, okay? Target's still a great company. You're right back to the 618 and the entire move higher pre-COVID from a price level of about 85 bucks, 90 bucks, what's the low here? $90.17, up to 270, we'll call it back to 158 and man you were just trading at 254 and the price of target april 18th a month ago i mean not many people folks i think the move expected in target was 12 dollars, and that's when it was trading at 22 trading 157 all right we got a little bit of volatility we got a market that's up at 3911 we got a 3900 handle yet again be careful of these rallies, folks, in a bear market because, boy, we got some volatility in spades and we got volatility coming down the line. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now, negative by 15 points. You're trading at 39.06, well off the lows that we had last night, though. You're only negative by about four tenths percent in the red. NASDAQ 100 was in the green, slipping back into the red barely. We jump over to Tesla shares. As I mentioned, Elon always in the press, quite the self-promoter as we know. Tesla negative by about two bucks, not too much of a move, uh, especially in the context of what this stock did yesterday. Now, the news out there yesterday uh, Elon out there, as I said, he's he's running four companies, but man, he can tweet about everything during the day. So they get removed from the ESG S&P 500. Now, I'm not going to get into whether that's deserved or not, but it is important to note the social and governance aspects of the S&P 500. He changed the world for electric vehicles, man, and Exxon is in there. So I understand the controversy. Yeah, they probably deserve to be in there. But the social and governance aspects of Tesla are an absolute joke, folks, all right? It's run by a CEO that is just lying about his ability to sell shares, okay? So in terms of the governance of this company and what's going on now, the S and the G get more into that as in even when you're talking about the employees, the work conditions, et cetera, okay? But I'm just talking about a company and, you know, he's pretty brilliant how he's getting into the political fray because that's going to allow him to say everything is fake news, okay? But here's the facts, folks, okay? Twitter, to look at the exact dates, okay? Twitter, there's your acceleration on the news that Elon was going to buy Twitter, okay? That news comes out over the weekend going into April 4th, okay? Since that news has come about, Tesla shares, where is it? Here it is. So somehow Tesla traded higher on the Monday following that news until the market figured out that this may be a bad thing for Tesla. Folks, April 1st, okay, which is the Friday before the weekend that that happened, that news came about, you had Tesla closing at 1,084. You're off $384 in the price of Tesla, and Tesla, folks, has 1 billion shares. Tesla market cap has lost almost $400 billion since Elon, decided to do whatever you want to say with Twitter, okay? Um, so he's all out there. He's a grand promoter, but those are the facts. And if I was an investor in Tesla, uh, it's pretty remarkable the lack of attention getting brought to the fact that on April 4th, when Elon went after Twitter, for whatever reason he did, the stock was trading at 1,080. The company has lost $400 billion in market cap. Um, and... Meanwhile, he was able to sell his shares, pretend like he's going to buy Twitter. Uh, he took a lot of Twitter investors to the cleaners as well. I mean, there's some of his biggest supporters, which is the thing that blows my mind the most, folks. You know, he's a brilliant man. He changed the world in great fashion the way he did it with Tesla. Doesn't excuse uh, the, the pain that he's causing some of those same people by doing whatever he wants as the richest man in the world. 
and you're talking about, you know, yeah, he's not even the chairman of the board anymore. That one got yanked when he was up to no good on Twitter talking about misleading investors about taking Tesla private, et cetera, okay? Um, and now you have a CEO that is out there saying it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair, as he single-handedly, okay, tanks this company. Now, of course, Tesla would be lower with the market at that time, okay? But how much lower, all right? How much devastation has been put into that company over the Twitter saga? That's debatable, but you know what's not debatable? That the company's lost about $400 billion in market cap. I don't know any other CEO that would be able to get away with that um, other than Elon. So keep that in mind when he says everything is so unfair, uh, how he has managed this company over that period of time. And uh, you can appreciate what he wanted to do with Twitter if you believe him, but I don't believe him for a second, folks, and I don't think you should either. All right, let's jump around and see what else we got going on. Yeah, so we talked about Kohl's. This one's an interesting one, talking about just general technology here. So the article over at CNBC, kind of a little bit of clickbait, but you got ex-Amazon engineers roll out their smartphone, smart shopping carts in Albertson stores. Uh, so you got two Amazon engineers. They start this company, ex-engineers, I should say, in 2018. And this is where the future is going, folks. It's pretty remarkable. Now, Amazon launched its own product called Dash Carts in 2020. Not sure how you compete with Amazon. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Instacart, which I've used plenty of times, they acquired smart cart maker Caper AI late last year. Other grocery stores, Kroger, they've been testing technology at a handful of stores. Just really interesting to see what's going to go on because this is what's happening, folks. This is where the future is going. Uh, you're probably going to have carts like this. You walk right out of the store. That eliminates the need for cashiers, right? Eliminates the need for human capital. Uh, Amazon already has where you can cash out, check out, cashier free. Uh, some of those stores. Uh, but it's coming to all of them. You're seeing it. Albertsons, Kroger, right? All of the likes. I'm sure Publix has something going on as well because that's where the future is. The challenge for Viva and its rivals is proving its retailers that the carts, five to $10,000 a pop. That's like a top of the line Apple computer right now. But that's what they're charging. But guess what? If they replace a cashier, it doesn't take that long to make it worthwhile for $5,000 if you're, if you're replacing a human employee that's making money every single day. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. It's not a matter of if, folks. It's a matter of when that those uh, changes are coming. Let's jump around to another interesting conversation going on, talking about smoking in casinos in Jersey. So I'm not sure where this one falls. It's an interesting one in terms of you have states. Now, listen, smoking, folks, is like the worst thing you can do for your health, right? Secondhand smoke, obviously horrible for your health as well. Um, not sure how I feel about making everything illegal where if anybody wanted to do something, they could. And this talks about making a ban on smoking in casinos. Now, many casinos have non-smoking areas that basically they go in this article talking about 90 percent of the casino is smoke free at this point that they're talking about. Let me see if I can slide down here and get that exact number. Yeah, smoking is only permitted in 10 percent of the gaming floor at Hard Rock Atlanta City, Hard Rock Atlantic City. And yeah, I, I hate smoking casinos too. Um, I do. I will never be in that smoke area. It's crazy. Uh, I used to remember when I came down here, I think it was in the early day, it might have been 20 years ago, that they still allowed it. Thankfully, poker rooms have done away with smoking for a while because there's no escaping the smoke. And what this talks about is the employees. And that's where it gets difficult. You know, you got employees, they're working, they're working surrounded by smoke. Um, but it gets a little difficult when you, what about the people that wanted to be able to smoke? And what about if a business wanted to do that? They can't do that anywhere. Not sure where that one goes, you know, because you, you have the ability for people to be able to be in smoke free. Um, but they're talking about a battle. Be interesting to see where it goes. Now you have total bans already in many of the states that surround it. I think it was New York, Delaware and the likes reading this. Um, so that one's going to shake out in Atlantic city saying it'd be tough. Because if uh, this happens, of course, companies always say it's about the jobs. And many times they can be lying, okay? Um, but it's an interesting one to see where this shakes out. Because at some point, you know, I feel like businesses should be able to offer some place where smoking exists if they want to, if consumers want that as well. You can't legislate controlling people's lives to that degree, folks, you know? I mean, one of the great things, you can tax it. Why not tax cigarettes through the roof, man? Tax them through the roof. 
You know, you want to be buying cigarettes, tax them through the roof. That's how you disincentivize that behavior instead of just making it illegal. That'd be my, you know, and it gets complicated from there. But all right, so much for a market bid. We got markets selling off. Dow, 30,000 handle in the Dow. We'll be right back, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 43 points. You see the acceleration. Let's jump into a 15-minute chart. So much for that bid on the open. We'll zoom it in again. You got as high as 39.20, folks. And just like, excuse me, just like that, you gave up almost 50 points. You got, excuse me, down to 38.74. Yeah, 46 points you traded from the open. Watch out for this volatility, man. Dow off 407 right now. You're right near the lows that we had overnight. Uh, and jumping to some of the commodities, gold, holding up pretty well right now. You're up 22 bucks at 18.38. You jump to the price of crude, regaining some of those losses. I mentioned crude. Since I came on the air at nine in the morning, crude's up three dollars, folks. Uh, volatility in spades, and we jump to notes and bonds, uh, sitting right near those lofty levels right now. You're talking about a yield in the ten-year, 2.8 percent right now. Over in Europe, you get the DAX down 1.3%, the FTSE down 2% right now, CAC Carole down 2% as well. Boy, it's going to be an interesting day, folks. See where we go. Let's jump to some of the stocks that had earnings last night. You got Kohl's down about 1.6%, not that bad right now, with the market down a full percent as well. Cisco taking it on the chin, man, down 14% for their earnings last night. 
Yeah, BJ with good numbers. BJ Wholesale. There you go. Up 9%. Let's see how Costco is trading. Down 1.3% for Costco shares. Uh, pulling back. You jump over to Amazon. Look at the difference here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this market goes, man. You got Amazon up a percent after getting hammered yesterday. You got markets completely in the red here. Okay. A little bit of what Kevin Hanks was talking about, finding the good companies, Walmart continuing to trade lower, Target down another 4%, man, just remarkable. TJ Maxx, one of the only stocks in the green yesterday, uh, holding pretty well, down about only two-tenths percent right now for TJ Maxx. And yeah, as Kevin was saying, we got some Foot Locker earnings coming up. They're going to be talking Foot Locker. They're going to be talking John Deere which we have tomorrow as well. John Deere down 2.1% and Palo Alto Networks coming up at 12 as well. Stay tuned, folks. We got quite a market. <clears throat> Basil Chapman, he's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Larry Pesavento live at 11. Fast Market with Kevin at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien all this afternoon. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. Have a great Thursday. Stay tuned for Basil.